Say his name. Chris Cuba. 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 Who killed Chris Cuba? Please kill Chris Cuba. Who killed Chris Cuba? Please kill Chris Cuba. What do we want? Justice. And when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. And when do we want it? Now. Another black man shot unnecessarily by the Metropolitan Police. And what a week for it to happen this week. The whole country is grieving. We are grieving for our loved ones, mm. our kings, mm. our queens. Yep. On behalf of the family, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, Mum and Dad couldn't make it. Like, emotionally, it was just too much for them. But they did send a message saying thank you and that they appreciate all your love and support and your kindness and it means the world to them, especially during these, these trying times. Um, as you know, a lot of you know that yesterday we, we did go to see the body. And it was so tragic. It was so tragic. The whole time I was just thinking, Chris, like, just get up. Get up, like, please. I was actually just begging him. And he looked so beautiful. He looked so handsome. And he just looked like he was sleeping. There's a baby on the way. Yeah. There's a baby on the way. Let's extend our love and our support to Chris's fiance, who is in bits. Who is in bits. She's supposed to be planning a baby shower. Yeah? Not a funeral. A baby shower. And we tried to bring up her spirit a bit and ask her if she still wanted to go ahead. She said, how? She said, how? How am I supposed to do that? I can barely get out of bed. We can't let them get away with this. He was a human being. You know, he had fears. He was once a child. He went to school. He was looking forward to things. He was a soon-to-be father. But finally, the officer in question was suspended. Of course it's right. But it's wrong that it took public pressure to make it happen. We cannot have a situation where somebody is shot dead through the windscreen of a car and the officer concerned was not immediately suspended yes. from the police force. Yes. Right. Not from yes. duty, but from the police force. In any other profession, if you did something that ended someone's life, you would have been suspended immediately. And if you were being investigated for homicide, you would be interviewed under caution immediately. Chris's friends, all the mandem that are here. Big up to the mandem. I see you. I feel you. I know people are concentrating on the family and this and that, but I'm going to make sure that you lot get the help as well. Yeah? Because PTSD has spiked up. Yeah? PTSD is at an all-time high with the mandem. Even the ones that are not even involved in the streets. Yeah? Just for being black alone. I want to tell people to stop what they are doing for our child, our kids, our black children. You can see on the media, you see the young boy, the way they stop them to search with no respect. Yes, they don't do the same for the another, another side. That's why I'm so upset. I'm, I've got anger, but not to do bad, but to stand up to say to, to stop. We tell them to stop. They need to stop about what they are doing. Yeah, we are right. human. Do you know what the PTSD for all my young black kings? Who can't even think about walking outside and knowing that someone's going to judge them just for being black. Your skin is not a weapon. You are not a threat. We are heavily marginalized. The police put on the uniform and come into this community with no intention to understand. They want to run with a stereotype. So that means that I see three male in a tracksuit might be a gang member. I'm a father. I've got a 12 year old son. I'm scared to let him go to the shop because he's an IC female and he likes wearing tracksuits. And I'm worried about what police brutality, what is gonna to do to his mental health. And I don't even have a solution. That's the honesty. And that's why I'm out here with the rest of you lot. Because we need a solution and we know this needs to stop. Because the effects of stop and search on young people who are not in that way inclined is so detrimental. It changes their perspective of how they see the world or what they think their futures are gonna be. 
and we can't allow that in our community. Are we going to allow that in our communities? No. I said, are we going to allow that in our communities? No. Police to Police Global is a database. Anytime a police stop and searches a youth, we document their face, their badge number, their details. So the same way they profile us, we start profiling them. The work that I've been doing for the last 24 years is to protect our community and support our young black men in particular. And the trauma that's been impacted on us by the police, generationally. My grandparents came here as part of the Windrush generation. Under SUS law, they were treated the same as our young people being treated today. And the thing with state sponsored oppression, people like Chris Carver end up losing their lives. We're doing the work, we're trying to heal, we're trying to rehabilitate, but this trauma is a cycle of trauma, a cycle of death in our communities. And for me, for one, I'm here to stand up for Chris because that could have been any one of us on that night. This is bigger than the individual officer in question. This is about the institution. This is about the culture within that institution. Chris Carver is the 1,833rd person to die in police custody or following police contact in England and Wales since 1990. That's 1,833 individuals whose lives have been cut short. That's 1,833 families who are grieving, who are mourning, who have a wound that will never close. One police officer has been prosecuted successfully. Dalian Atkinson was tasered three times. He was kicked in the head so that there were footprints on his face. That officer didn't get convicted of murder. He only got convicted of manslaughter. I heard someone say, oh, juries don't like to convict police officers. When have any of those juries looked like any of us? When? When will they ever look like any of us? That needs to change right now. There's so many in the United Kingdom, like my brother Sean Rigg, Saini Lewis, Kingsley Burrell, Ian Taylor, who was killed in 2019 and we only got to hear about it a few months ago after the inquest. He was extremely unwell and vulnerable and having an asthma attack. The officers wouldn't give him as much as water to drink when he was asking for it, when he was saying, I can't breathe. No justice. No peace. 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 For those who are not here, I know there are different reasons, but if you could be here and you're not here, question yourself. Your silence is consent. You're part of the problem. I don't want this to be one of them situations where it's like we protest, we go home, and we forget about it, and we're back here again when we feel triggered. We have to carry on, because guess what? If all of you guys didn't come and show the Cabo family your support, the police will still be messing them around. Yep. So this is our demand. Did the officers know that it was Chris in the car? or were they simply following a suspect vehicle? The suspended officer must be interviewed under caution, without delay, and keep family informed of this. There should be a charging decision within weeks and not months. United Families and Friends campaign, a coalition of all the families whose loved ones have died at the hands of the state Saturday, the 29th of October, 12 o'clock noon, we are going to be marching from Trafalgar Square down to Whitehall in remembrance of all those loved ones that have been murdered. I want to see everybody, black and white, we all must unite. We have a new prime minister. We have a new commissioner. We have a new king. Now is the time for change. Now! You can deny me. You can decide to take my rights away. No matter cause they Something inside so strong I know that I can make it 
Though you're doing me wrong, so wrong. You thought that my pride was gone. Oh no. Something inside so strong.